Good morning. Welcome to I Care I Move. This is Move More Reimagined. Um, we are week four of 26. The first week was an introductory week. So if you've only just joined us, do what you can today within your own limitations. So I'm Pat and Helen's in the background. So is Nikki. So we're all watching, making sure that you're OK. If at any point you need to stop because you don't feel unwell or you're too out of breath or for whatever reason, have a sit down or just stand and pump your heels make sure that you're safe. It's not a competition. You do what you can do safely. Um, having said that, have, a, have some space around you. Make sure you've got a drink of water. If you need any puffers or sprays, have them close by. Don't start without them, please. Have you got a band nearby? Um, and let's get going. So let's think about posture. Always, always think about posture. So I'm going to hip walk to the front of my chair. How do we do that? Wide feet, a wide base of support, okay? That will stop you from maybe popping, falling off the side of your chair. It just gives you some stability. So we're leaning from one side to the other to hip walk to the front. And let's just stay here for now. So my feet are wider than my hips. I'm going to lift through, I'm gonna lift up through my um, chest. I'm going to open out through my shoulders, my collarbones, and send my shoulder blades back and down. And I'm going to try not to lift my chin, because sometimes when we do that, you lift your chin. We're not doing that. Try and keep the chin parallel to the floor and just breathe. Take some long, deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And then really feel the chest expand, because sometimes if we you keep doing that, sometimes if we're sitting slouching, we don't get big breaths. So it's good to expand your lungs, expand the chest. And then let's start dropping your hands by the sides and lift the shoulders to the ears into a shoulder raise, lower them carefully. So what I mean by that is don't just drop them very quickly, okay? We drop them with control and keep breathing. We don't hold our breath either. And then think about, holding your tummy muscles in. So pulling the belly in a little bit, but not so much that you can't breathe. How does that feel? Quite nice, hopefully. If you've got any crunches, they should go away. If you need to do it a bit longer, stay with this movement, but we're gonna come on to our heel lift. So we're just lifting one heel and then the other. Your shoulders are relaxed and your hands just rest on your thighs. So there's no tension in the shoulders. Okay, so I'm just lifting one heel and then the other. And then I want you to focus on that, on the feet. So focus on rolling through one foot and then the other. So really getting a nice stretch into the um, soles of your feet. And then you could start maybe spreading the toes out. This is your circulation boost. So we're pumping the blood from your feet to your calves, up your body, heart around your brain and back again into your lungs. So hold the feet still. Let's come into a shoulder circle. So sending the ears up to the ear, sending the shoulders even up to the ears and all the way back and down and feel that lovely little stretch there across the collarbones. Keep breathing. Don't hold your breath. So up, back and down, up, back and down. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? If you need to do one shoulder first and then the other, you can. You can do them one at a time. Sometimes we get a bigger range of movement if we do that. Give it a try. You don't have to follow me exactly. So do what works for your body today. And you know, sometimes if you did it last week and you were like, oh, I was fine last week and you're struggling this week, it's fine. Just go with it. Okay, back to the heels. So lifting the heels, pumping, breathing. Okay, feet come wide again, stop the heel pump, and then we're gonna take the hands down to the side, and we're just gonna drop one hand down to the side and use the muscles in the belly, in the core to lift you up and hold up the top there. Have a breath, have a breath. 
So it's like we're picking up something off the floor and I'm literally leaning right down to the side, not to the front or behind. And that means we get a nice stretch through the waist. Excellent. How does that feel? No, it's good to notice your body. And remember what we said last week, write it down. If you struggle with anything, write it down. Or if you think, oh, I can do that better this week, write it down there and then or after class and let us know. OK, back to your heel pump. For those of you that have been doing this a while, you might want to stand. But I'm going to stay sitting because most of you will be sitting for today for this part anyway. So back to the heel pump. Lifting the heels maybe a little bit more. And then we're going to we're going to come to the feet. So we're going to come to that lovely heel toe pump. And let's see if we can show you a bit clearer. Heel, toe, heel, toe. So heel presses into the floor. On that same spot, the toe presses onto the floor. And it means you need to lift that knee. So none of this, no sliding. It's a proper lift and squeeze the toes up. When you put your toe down, really press down into the floor. And why are we doing this? We're looking at ankle mobility because when I get you to stand up later and do some larger steps, if you don't have that range of movement in your ankle, you're not going to be able to make a bigger step. Okay, let's change sides. So heel and toe. And it's okay if one side feels more flexible than the other. Sometimes you might need to work on this movement a bit more. Or if you think you need even longer, start doing it before the class, maybe in preparation or make that one of your exercises that you do at home for your homework. Keep breathing. Are you lifting that knee? You're not cheating. Are you squeezing now? So squeeze and press down on the toes, squeeze and pull the toes up. Excellent. And you don't have to, you know, you could go really slowly. Especially if you've got some kind of limitations there, you might want to do it really slowly and just do a two or three. OK, back to heel pump. This time we're adding opposite arms into that march. So what are we doing? We're swinging these arms. Can you swing them up to your ears one at a time? So up to your ears and down to your, past your hips. So your hands are kind of brushing oh, face on. So your hands, your elbows are all in a line. We're not kind of across because we're thinking about shoulder mobilization here. So elbow comes behind you. Have you got that opposite leg, opposite knees to hands? Excellent. Keep breathing. So you should be starting to feel a bit warmer now. Lovely. And then feet nice and wide. We're going to, you've got several options here. You can slide one hand down and pull the other hand back, but really lift through the chest. Okay. So we want still a lovely posture. Keep breathing. Sometimes it helps to breathe in at the front. And then as you twist, as you rotate, it sometimes helps to breathe out. Just gives you a little bit more air as you breathe out. If you're standing, you could be here, hands across your chest or across your tummy or hands on the back of the chair. Lots of different options. But try and take your eye gaze with you unless you feel dizzy. If you just follow with your eyes, then you get a bigger range of movement. And that's quite nice. I think we should be doing this every day before we even, especially before we go in the car, we should be doing this because you need to turn around, don't you, and look behind you sometimes. And if you haven't got this range of movement, then it's quite tough to do and a bit unsafe too. OK, back to your march. And you should be a lot warmer. OK, I'm going to come up to actually I'm not going to come up to standing. We're going to do hip walk. So 
we're going to come back to the hip walk as we come into endurance. So we sway. So we take the weight from one side to the other. If your feet are nice and wide, you're steadier. So I'm swaying to one side, lift up the opposite cheek and move back in the chair and then come forward. So it's quite a big movement and it might make you out of breath. It might make you puffed out. So sway and lift, sway and lift. And then as you come forward, you sway and shift forwards, okay? And this is how you need to get out of your chair when we're tired or when we think we're, you know, we're, you keep going when we're slumped, we think, oh, I can't be bothered. So you get out your chair like that and that's not good. And then you're trying to get up from here. It's much easier to do it this way. And it can help you to get to a place of safety if you were to be on the floor. You can hip walk, shuffle to a door or a window or a phone. So always, always remember this one. Practice if you can. The lovely hip walk. Okay, now I'm going to come up to standing. So I'm going to bring my feet behind my knees. I'm going to look forwards and up. I'm going to push up to standing and I'm going to pump my heels. So lift up my heels. And then I'm going to go around to the back of my chair. So take your time, find your place where you're going to have some support. So it might be a worktop, it might be between two chairs, behind one chair, whatever you need. Okay, and we're going to march. Don't ever underestimate marching. Marching is brilliant. And if you think, oh, I can't remember what to do for homework, march. So you can hold on with both hands and mind your knees. Maybe stand on the diagonal or hold on with one hand to the side. Or as I said, between two or a wall, cupboard. Okay, now we're going to start to make it bigger, but not necessarily faster. So I'm going to lift my knees up a little bit more in front of me. Keep breathing. So slowly, how's your posture? So sometimes when this happens, we start to fold. It's fine to just have a rest and reset if it's tiring you out, but just keep those heels lifting. So. Why do we do this? You need strength in these legs, in the fronts of the hips, to help you to get upstairs, up hills and slopes, in and out of the car. Every day we use this movement. If you want to add in an arm or two arms, you can add in those opposite arms again. Just one arm or none. Choice is up to you. And that's how we can progress as well. We might start with no hands and then one week you might find yourself doing one and then adding in two so how do you feel notice are you out of breath or are you okay we've still got a few more exercises in endurance to do so we like to pace you and we like to think keep your energy levels between five or six if we were thinking about a score of 10 OK, we're just going to pump the heels now. So this is your time to get your breath back. Oh, until we go to the next one. So that's your recovery time, really, until we go on to the next movement. Now, I want you to just watch before you join in. We're going to step to the side. Just a step. So I'm behind my chair. I'm sliding my hands across. So I'm not hanging on for dear life. If that's too much for you, you can just tap one foot and then the other, or you could just do one to start with and then the other. Otherwise join in. And what we're going to do is add on that lift of the knee, like you're stepping over your cat. So up and over, up and over, up and over, up and over. Keep breathing. If you need a rest, come out of it and just pump your heels. You know you can do that to recover. Or if you just need a moment, if you need to sit down, if you're sitting, you can still do this in seated. Let me show you. 
So up and over and back in. Up and over and back in. Lovely. And then let's come back to the heel pump. So how are your energy levels now? You might find you're a bit puffed out. That's okay. As long as if I said to you, how are you? And you could say, I'm okay. Or we don't want you so out of breath that you couldn't speak to us, okay? So relax your shoulders. Have a breather. Excellent. Yes. Lovely. Okay. We're going to lunge. So I'm going to show you front on and then I'll show you by the chair. So you keep pumping your heels. So I'm stepping forwards and out slightly and landing on my heel and then the whole of my foot. Now, if you're new and you're not confident, just a small step, just to the outside edges of the chair. You can join in now if you want to. So it's a small step out and a press back. I'll show you with my chair in front. So I'm coming here. I'm using the power in my leg to press me back and here. Now, when I come back, I'm coming back to my feet are still apart. Really important so that when you land, you're steady. You've still got that lovely base of support rather than coming here where you might be wobbly. So imagine like a triangle. Oh, it's not a triangle then, is it? What's that? Is that a trapezium? I don't know. I'll look it up. Oh. If you know, let us know. There's one, two, three, four, four edges. Okay. How does that feel? Why do we do this? We did it last week lunge you might need to reach forwards and get something you might have something in a cupboard that's quite low you might have dropped something in your car footwell and you need to reach it you might have dropped the loo roll there you go and actually don't stop doing those things you know some people say oh well don't put them in a low cupboard if you can do it keep doing it it's good practice Use it or lose it. Okay, back to your lovely march or just actually just a heel pump. So recovery. How do you feel? Are we okay? Give us a thumbs up. Okay, then we're coming back to two steps. So I'm gonna go one together, two together. So I am bringing my feet together and at that point, that will be your most unsteadiest. So have something to support you if you need to. We're bringing the heart rate down. Mind the trees. That's it. And you might hear I'm a little bit out of breath. It's good. It means that you're working your heart muscle. Your lungs are working. We have to work your heart muscle to improve, to make improvements. But we don't want to overwork you or underwork you. Oh, nearly finished in endurance. So we have to bring your heart rates down um, at a manageable level. So if we stopped suddenly, you might feel a bit dizzy because your heart rate, your blood pressure is quite high still. And then we stop and your body goes, oh. So let's just come to a single step. Nice and slowly. So still moving but slowing it down, making the movement smaller. And then we're going to come to our wide base sway, feet nice and wide, transferring the weight to one foot, lifting the heel on the other, transferring. And then we add our arms, pushing upwards to relax those shoulders. And we love this one, our lovely wide base sway. 
bringing your heart rates down, but then coming into a little bit of balance as well. Okay, just one hand on one side, then the other, pushing up, pushing up. Breathe in, have you got your breath back yet? No hands, no hands now. Just to sway, relax the hands. Sometimes it helps to give them a bit of a shake. And then let's bring our feet in. So moving on to balance, if you need to get a quick drink, do. But we're going straight into balance. So progressing, not progress. Well, staying with what we've been doing, but actually because we're doing the same, you might progress. You might be more confident with the movements. You might feel able to do a little bit more or move a bit bigger. So let's look at some steps. So I'm going to come behind my chair. I'll show you a seated option in a moment. I'm going to come behind my chair and my feet are under my hips. Now in balance, we normally go wider. Actually, we can go wider. I'm going to step directly back. And then I'm going to bring my feet back to that starting position. Now you can carry on working with one foot if you want to, or you can alternate. It depends what you've got going on with your body. If you've got a weaker side, sometimes it helps to just stay on that one side. You might have a stick or a frame. And if you're seated, let me show you. Everybody in standing, carry on. In seated, you sit forwards on the chair and then you come backwards. You just take a little step, but add that lean back so you get that feeling of being unbalanced. And the way that we improve balance, I'm going to swap legs. And the way that we improve balance is to challenge it. So it's not that we want to scare you, but we need to make sure that we're, you know, if you're, if you're feeling a bit nervous, then make those movements small and practice them at home. That's how we get better. So a step back, you can hold on. Like I said, both hands gives you most support both hands with just a finger touch or both hands with one finger and then you can take one hand off one hand and finger etc until you're confident enough to come off but you might not be able to and that's fine we're all so different let's come back to the other foot I'm going to alternate now and how think about your foot placement where are you landing I'm landing toe whole foot, pressing up, peeling through my feet. So toe, whole foot down, lift the heel, press off. Toe, whole foot, lift and press. Toe. And just notice as you're doing it, are you becoming more confident? You know, it's a bit like if we were to ask you to get back on a bike. I haven't ridden a bike for I don't know. I'd probably be, probably be quite nervous, but the more you do it, the more confident you become and the better you become. So just keep breathing. Stepping back and our muscles have memory. So our muscles remember that we've stepped back and maybe if you were a bit wobbly one day, your muscles would remember and you would step back. And we know this happens. People tell us before I would have fallen, but actually I step back. Okay, hold it there. Let's come into another direction. So we're going to step to the side this time. Just one side. So pick a side, step to the side and come back to that wide. My feet are under my hips now. So if I had my chair in front of me, I would slide my hand across. So I've still got support and step together. And you need to bend your knee as you step out. I'll show you from the side. So I'm here, the microphone in the way, step to the side. So I'm still keeping fairly upright and I'm looking forwards and my knee is kind of pointing over my toe just to protect your knee. Sometimes that can cause knee pain if you've got your knees pointing in or out. So just out a little bit. Out to the side. And notice how that feels. Then we're going to change sides. 
So it might feel quite different for you on the other side. Start small, start just stepping out. Same if you're sitting, take a step and lean. It might be that, let me show you. You keep going if you're standing. So in sitting, you're on the front of your chair. You're gonna to step to the side and lean. So you might wanna take that other leg out, leg out a little bit further. See how you feel. Because you might need to press on that leg. So we're leaning to give us that sense of being unbalanced. And then we get confidence, uh, increase, an increase of confidence. Keep going. So we've done forwards and out to the side and we've done back. So all those different directions. How are you this side compared to your other side? Write it down. Lovely, good, excellent. And then just come to a halt. Okay, coming into our lovely tandem work. So we're gonna take one foot in front of the other. Now I showed you last week options, but I'll show you again. So I've got one foot, I'm gonna take the outside foot in front, but I'm gonna leave a gap behind, in between my heel and my toe. Okay, now I'm gonna transfer the weight forwards and then back. As I transfer my weight forwards, my heel lifts. As I transfer my weight back, my toes lift. Check your posture. So your, your shoulders should be over your hips, knees, feet. So you're upright. You're not sticking your bottom out when you're transferring your weight. Now, if this is too much for you, remember what we said before, you can have feet quite close together or just a little bit um, staggered, we would call it. For some people, you might need to step out quite wide as well. See what suits you. And this movement can actually, it, it's quite a pull on the back of your hip we don't often stand like this and this is the most unbalanced that you might be depending on how you feel so it's just a little tandem sway and i think the sway that transfer of weight is easier than standing still but let's try that standing still so soften the knees pull the belly in and then tuck the bottom under a little bit Okay, and then relax your shoulders. You can hold on still. I gaze forwards if you can and just hold and try and put the weight evenly through both feet. So through the front foot, the back foot. And sometimes it helps to just move forwards and back and then find that central position and then grow a bit taller. And then to come out of this movement, we're going to step wide, step wide. Okay, that's how we compensate. That's how we come out to make sure you're steady. Now I'm going to move my chair, but you can wander around to another place of support. If you're sitting exactly the same, you just sit with one foot in front of the other and lean forwards or one foot on top. So one foot, so the outside leg comes in front again. And let's just stand still first with this foot. And then we'll go into this way. I think it's nicer. So what are your feet doing when you're in this position? Are, you, are your toes kind of wibble wobbling within your shoes or on the floor? If they are, then that's, that's you just trying to steady yourself. It helps to spread your toes out and put the weight through the big toe, second toe. And that immediately should create some stability in your ankles. Are your knees so slightly soft? So not locked out. They're not really stiff. They're slightly bent. And then pull in the muscles around your belly, your core, shoulders, breathe, smile. And then let's add in that little sway. So that transfer, lifting the heel, lifting the toes. Ta -da, ta -da. And then when you're really good, you can take it into a Charleston. But not today. That's it. How does that feel, that side? And, you know, if we've got niggles going on, ankles, knees, hips, back, it can aggravate. But hopefully 
it won't hurt after or be painful, uncomfortable after the session. If it is, let us know. Or, you know, we expect some muscle soreness. We call it DOMS. It's delayed onset muscle soreness. And that's, um, we expect that for a couple of days. Anything that's really bad or goes on for longer than that might mean we've just done too much too soon. So let us know and we can help you with that. Okay, let's come out. How do we come out of that? Move nice and wide, your compensatory step. How are we doing? Good. Oh my word. Right, a little bit of a march. We're going to come on to strength now. So grab your bands or a pair of tights or leggings or a dressing gown, belt type thing. Something that's a bit, well, or not, because we can use our own body weight. So we've got lots of options. And if you need a band, let us know and we'll send one. So if you need to have a full back rest for a moment, sometimes that, that's quite a lot standing for a while uh, if you're not used to standing and exercising. So just have a full back rest, which means you rest your back, you rest your core, just rest everything and just breathe, but not for long because we've got to go into so targeted strength. And strength is, you know, we, we talk, we think strength using weights, these are, brilliant for strength work because we're resisting our own body weight and if we control the movement going out and in rather than out and then letting it ping in we get a, uh, some strength work on the way out and then strength on the way in as we resist okay so come forwards in your chairs we're going to go straight to legs today so i'm going to bring my feet together but in front of me I'm going to lift my heels and as I put the band under, I'm going to look forwards. I'm not going to look down. You don't need to really look what you're doing. And that will stop me heading towards the floor. OK, put my heels down. And I hold the edges of my band. Then I'm going to take the band over one leg and then overlap the band across the other side and then just hold it in the middle of your band. So you don't wrap it around your fingers and you're not holding the ends. The ends are kind of flapping to the sides. And then we're going to sit up again, tuck your bottom under and then just walk your feet out a little bit. And then we're going to send the knees out and slowly let them back in now. I'm just going to turn to face you so you can see properly. Okay, and, and I need to tighten mine because it's not strong enough, but it's fine. It's fine to work with it. So we're going out, 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 and then in, 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 out, 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 and in, in. In. And you might go, oh, I can't feel that. It's not, it's not doing anything. Keep going. And then tell me, you might need to walk your feet out a little bit more. So you get a bigger movement. Ooh, and lower. And you can do this on the bed without a band on your sides. You could lie down. It's called a clam or a clamshell. And you keep your feet and knees together. And then you, then you just open out your knees. We'll send you a video of that and you can tell me how you get on. See, we don't let you rest anywhere. Even in the bed, you've got to do exercises. How does that feel? So have a rest, bring your feet in just, and you can have a full back rest Ugh. or just rest. Adjust where you need to. So, and these bands kind of, they, they do, um, they do kind of, um, you, they go into a little, into a little, um, I don't know how you say it. They crumple up anyway. So as long as you've not got them wrapped around your fingers. So we're gonna go again, because that was one set. So we're gonna do two sets today. So feet in, pop the band across itself, lay it over and it should hold itself with you just popping your fingers on top. Then we walk our feet out, knees together. And then we send knees out, lovely posture. Breathe, 
this is really good for your hip strength, lower back strength, pelvic strength. So really good to practice this. As you can see, it's not difficult to do. If it's hard for you, you can start really small and just make really small movements. If it's painful, you could try it without the band for now. You could add a little bit of pressure with your hands. So resisting your own hands as well. So how is it going? We've got a couple more. Okay, rest it there, bring the feet in, let go, undo. Okay, how are we doing with time? Ten to. Right, we're going to do biceps. So biceps are these muscles at the front of your arms, top arms um, and upper arms, and they're the ones that help you to lift things, bags of shopping, um, all sorts of things. They're the ones that help you lift things in life. So for safety, just watch first. Watch before you do it. So I'm going to put the band on the floor. I'm going to put one foot on, then the other foot on. OK, and then I'm going to hold the band in my hand with my palm up. Hopefully I'll go that way. So it's coming at the side of my leg. My hand comes in and the end of the band is on the outside of my hand. So it shouldn't come away from your feet. And then we're going to lift up through the chest. Elbow tucks in to the side and we lift with that palm up hand comes towards the shoulder and we slowly let it go. The hand comes back to the thigh. I'll show you from the side. So really important. You keep that elbow still. We're not working kind of up here. So pull and try and keep that wrist nice and straight. So how's that feel? Not too fast. Remember what I said about that resistance as we come up and that resistance as we come back down. Ooh, lovely. Very good. Let's do one more. Can you hold it up there? Just for a second or well, three, two, one. Slowly down and let go. Oh. And then we're going to swap legs, swap arms even. So. Pop the band on the floor, both feet on, into the other hand, up the side of the leg. My feet are still wide apart to keep me steady. Palm faces up, relax your shoulders, elbow tucks in. And you can adjust the band. If it's, if it's too hard, you can make it longer so you haven't got so far. If it's too easy, take the hand lower and then, then you get more resistance, okay? So the hand should come back to the start position and the elbow shouldn't be moving. And if you only can do a couple, fine, write it down. And then in a few weeks time, let's hope you can do a couple more. Or if you stay at that for a couple of weeks, that's fine too. Let us know. Excellent. How does that feel? A great exercise. Next week we'll do triceps, which are the backs of the arms. There you go. So let's hold it up and let go. Oh, lovely. Have a wiggle of those shoulders. Just roll them around. And then we're going to come into flexibility and a little bit of Tai Chi and then relaxation. So that's your strength done. So I'm going to sit for my uh, for flexibility. So we've just worked the arms, so we need to stretch the arms. So let's just take one hand away in front of you and just hold on to your fingers and just press them down gently, sending the elbow upwards. And then change sides if you can. You just should feel a little stretch there. Okay, let's pop one hand to the opposite shoulder. Hold the, the arm, just support the arm. And then if you want to, you can bring the arm across the body a little bit more. And breathe. OK, that hand, same shoulder. Wiggle the fingers down towards the center of your shoulder blades, lifting the elbow. You can give it a nudge if you want to and then lift up through the chest. 
breathe, don't hold your breath. And then if you can, let's take the arm up and then lean, take your feet wide, take that arm over your head, whichever way that might be. And then come forwards and out of that stretch. Other hand, opposite shoulder. You can hold it there or you can support with the other arm and then just lengthen that arm, bring it closer to your chest and that stretch in the backs of the arms. Breathe. And then hand on the same shoulder, lift up the elbow and I'm wiggling my hand towards the center of my shoulder blades. See where you get to. And lift up through the chest. Feet are nice and wide, take that hand up and over your head. And then come forwards and out. Hands come into the lower back or grip in the chair, sending the elbows together or towards each other and just lifting the chest, the chin slightly. Fabulous. And relax. Let's stretch out the legs. So taking one leg forwards, it's right in front of me. Okay, toes are pointing up to the ceiling. My other leg's going to come out a little bit just so I've got some support. Hands on the thigh, hinge from the hips. So lean forwards from the hips and keeping that spine nice and long and just stretching out the legs because we've done quite a lot of leg work today. So we don't want you to be achy. So it's nice to stretch out. And then relaxing the foot off and then squeezing the toes up towards the knees for a calf stretch. So if ever you feel your calves are tight, then just give them a little stretch. And then we're gonna swap sides, foot plants firmly on the floor, other heel on the floor, toes pointing up, hands on the thighs, hinge forwards. And my eye gaze kind of follows me, so my neck is always in neutral. So I've got that lovely curve in my neck rather than lifting up and extending. Breathe, you're nearly done. And then sit up, relax the foot off and then squeeze the toes up towards the knee. Fabulous. And then take the feet nice and wide. Coming into our adapted Tai Chi. So fingertips come together. And press down. And we just try and slow the breathing here. Lifting and lowering. And maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll come up to standing to do this. And then we're gonna lift and press to me. So just press those fingers gently to me and circle down, up, invert the hands and press to me. So not too far, just in a comfortable position. Okay, and then we're gonna work on our lovely cloud. So one hand comes across the body and that hand comes in front of your face and it drops down. As it drops down, the other hand lifts and takes its place. So both hands go in the same direction. At the side, they just swap positions and one takes over. One comes up, one comes down. And the, eye, the hand is just at eye level. Keep breathing. So this shouldn't be uncomfortable. If you need to make it even smaller, that's fine. And just notice maybe your breath getting slower. Excellent. And then let's come back to fingers together. This time we're going to drop them to one side. Into center. Fingers come together and lift. And drop to the other side. Come together. And last time together. To the side. And then we just lift up and down. And then I want you to pop your hands on your thighs, sit back in your chairs, into that full back rest, 
close your eyes, relax your fingers, relax your shoulders, have a wiggle jiggle if you need to. Two minutes of relaxation. So just trying to focus on your breath. Just being aware of the breath as you breathe in through your nose and allowing the breath to just leave through the mouth. And just take your time with it. There's no rush. And try and get that breath, try and take a little longer to breathe out. And then when you have that slow rhythm, just notice what's happening with the lungs, the ribs. The ribs rise as you breathe in. And they fall as you breathe out. And with every breath out, feel your shoulders relaxing a little bit more. Feel your whole body relaxing a little bit more. And then on the next breath in, send in the breath down to the belly. So the belly swells on that breath in. And as you breathe out, the belly falls. Just allowing yourself a few moments of complete relaxation, complete calm, recovery. And you quickly get used to becoming calm, relaxed, and benefiting from that, being in the state of calm. It's really good for us in these stressful lives. So it's good to be calm, quiet, silent. And then we start to move our toes, our fingers. Sometimes we like to have a big stretch now, a yawn. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a round of applause. Well done for joining us today. If you want to just stay in your chairs or relax, you can have a little nap. If you want to join us for a chat afterwards, then we'll see you in a moment. But thank you for joining us again on our Move More session. Um, make sure you do your homework. It does help. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same place.